Good morning and welcome to Kids Crossing and a Happy New Year. Hard to believe it's a new year again. I'm feeling a little bit behind today because my wife and I just returned from a trip to see our children and grandchildren over Christmas. Perhaps some of you went on a trip over the holidays, spending time with family when it is time to celebrate the holidays, like Christmas, is a blessing. Today, we're going to learn about a time when Jesus and his family went on a trip. It was a very special celebration for all Jewish people called the Feast of Passover. They traveled all the way to Jerusalem to go to the temple. The temple was the place for the people to worship God, sort of like our churches. At the temple, the people heard the word of God preached. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it tells us, the Word of God is living and active. That does not mean it is alive like, like you and I. It, it means that the words written are just as relevant today as they were when the words were first written, and they have power. They have the power to forgive, create faith, and change your life. At the age of 12, Jesus knew there was power in God's Word because they were the words of His Heavenly Father. So when Jesus and his family visited the temple for the, for the feast, something quite unusual happened. You'll find out about it, but first, why don't you visit uh, Miss Lisa while I get back to work? Hello. I was just getting some things together for a children's message. I'm planning to talk about what you need if you're going on a trip. I packed some things into my bag. Would you like to see what I packed? I will tell you though, some of the things are necessary and some are not. You can help me decide what things should be left behind. Oh, oh let me open up here. Oh dear, it looks like I have a stowaway. My goodness, what? Caramel? What? How, how did you get in here? What? Oh, okay, Caramel, come on, Caramel. Carmel, stop sucking your thumb so I can talk to you. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on. It's okay. It's okay. Just stop. There we go. He, he's a baby orangutan, you know, and you, okay, you know how babies like to suck their thumbs. Okay, that's enough. There we go. Okay. Well, no, I don't want you to hide. No, and, and no, don't suck on your foot either. Come on, Carmel. C just tell me what is going on. You heard me talk about a trip, and you did not want to be left behind. Well, you know, Carmel, if I was really going on a trip, I would not leave you behind on purpose. But I was just going to talk to the children about being prepared. Oh, you are prepared? Oh, you mean you packed some things into your backpack? Well, let's check to see what you packed. Let's see. Oh, ah, you have some water. That is always very good. And huh, I see you brought along some snacks. Yeah. Ah, that's in case you get very hungry. Good idea. And, okay, what is this? Oh my goodness. Okay, Carmel, what, what is this? What, how did you, you get this walking stick into your backpack? Ah, uh, yeah, you must have had lots of help to do that. But a walking stick is a good idea in case you need help along the way. And since you are a very small orangutan, you need lots of help. That's true. But you know, all of us need help in our lives. That's why it's important that we have Jesus in our lives. Well, oh yes, Carmel, Jesus wants to help us. He loves us very much. In fact, that is why Jesus came to earth to help us and to bring us salvation. He came to earth as a baby, but he was fully God too. 
Yes, I know it's hard to understand. And even Jesus' earthly parents, Mary and Joseph, did not understand that completely. The story we have today on Kids Crossing is about a time that they went on a trip to Jerusalem. And Jesus did something that surprised everyone. <laughs> yes, Miss Susan will be telling the whole story, but I will tell you that Jesus understood more about the scriptures than even the priests in the temple. R remember, Jesus is God. That is why he understood what the scriptures were saying. You don't always understand what the Bible is saying. Well, you're not alone, Carmel. All of us have a hard time understanding it at times. That is why we have church and Sunday school and kids crossing. But we can also pray to Jesus and ask him to help us to understand. And he will help us. Yes, Carmel, the Bible was written a long time ago, but we can still trust what it says because God was the one who told the writers what to write. Janitor Bob told us a verse from Hebrews 4 verse 12 that says, the word of God is living and active. That means that God's word is just as important for us today as it was when it was written thousands of years ago. Yes, you can eat your snack and drink your water while Miss Susan tells the story. But I better get back to preparing the children's message. We'll see you again next week. When we pack things for a trip, Carmel is right. Water is important. In the Bible, Jesus calls himself the living water. When we have Jesus in our lives, he gives us all we need. So to be prepared for life, we should pack Jesus in our heart and in our lives. Good morning. Happy New Year. <coughs> have you done any celebrating lately? Maybe you had a Christmas celebration with family or a New Year's party with friends. My family got together with some friends on New Year's Eve. We played games, ate good food, and had fun wearing these silly hats and blowing these horns. <coughs> it was fun being with friends. In our story today, Mary and Joseph and Jesus are going on a trip with friends and family to go to the temple in Jerusalem. They are going there for a special celebration called the Feast of the Passover. It is a celebration that happened every year. But when the celebration is done and Mary and Joseph are ready to go home, they can't find Jesus. He is lost. Mary and Joseph are very worried and scared. Let's read our story and find out what happened to Jesus. Jesus and the Family Trip Mary, Joseph, and the child at last were safe, they knew. They went back home to Nazareth and there young Jesus grew. The Bible doesn't tell us much of what he did each day, but we can guess that just like you, he learned to work and play. Every year, Jesus' parents went down to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, and Jesus went with them. When he was 12, they went again with relatives and friends. It was a time for swapping news and tying up loose ends. Whatever happened to old soul? Wow, Sarah's gotten slim. Your Jesus stands so straight and tall. Oh, yes, we're proud of him. The festival of Passover was solemn, filled with awe. Young Jesus watched each ritual and pondered all he saw. For on that night so long ago, with his almighty hand, the Lord God freed his people and led them out of Egypt land. At last the feast was over, time to journey home again. Next year in Jerusalem, folks called, we'll see you then. Back up the road to Nazareth, the family made its way. Then Mary asked, where's Jesus? Have you talked to him today? No, not today, said Joseph, but don't worry, Mary dear. I'm sure he's with our relatives or friends. He's somewhere near. Have you seen Jesus? 
Not today. Have you? Or you? Or you? But no one had, and Mary cried, Oh, no, what shall we do? We'll go back to Jerusalem, said Joseph. Never mind. We'll find him there. He'll be all right. He simply stayed behind. Back to Jerusalem they fled. Jesus had been gone for three long days. His parents' hearts were sick with fear. Their minds were in a daze. Then on day three they found him in the temple, sitting there and talking with the teachers. Son, you gave us such a scare, cried Mary. We've been searching. Why, asked Jesus. Don't you know? I must be in my father's house. Then Jesus rose to go. He's brilliant, all the teachers said, as Jesus went away, back to his home in Nazareth to grow still more each day. Where was Jesus? He was in the temple. He was with all the teachers. Do you remember who Jesus is? He is God, and the temple is God's house. So he was exactly where he should be. But Mary and Joseph, they didn't really understand. They knew Jesus was special, but they didn't understand all of God's plan. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand the Bible and God's plan too. That is why we go to church and to Sunday school and read the Bible to learn more about God. God sends his Holy Spirit to us to help us understand and to have faith in God. Even when we feel lost, scared, or worried, God is there with us, and he will give us everything we need. Thank you for listening to my story today. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope you are able to spend some time learning about God this week. Happy New Year, and may God bless your week. Every time you read the Bible, God is speaking to you. Even at my age, I continue to learn more about God through the Bible. It's okay if you don't understand all of it. There are still things that I don't understand. What is most important is that you spend time reading the Bible and learning about, about God. Like Miss Susan said, God promises to send His Holy Spirit to help you understand. The words of God are powerful and can help you in your life. Howdy! Felix here, because now it's time for fun with Felix! Hey, do you know what the pencil said to the sharpener? Stop going in circles and get to the point! Ha ha! Speaking of getting to the point, 
Are you ready? I am. Here we go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zach. Oh, fiddlesticks. It's something like that. Let's try again. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zachary. Oh, fuddy-duddy. I have to be almost right. Do you know what it is? I think I heard someone say, Zechariah, is that what you said? I knew I was close. Hey, that reminds me. Next time, we will get to the end of all the books in the Old Testament. So you get to work and see if you can learn them all before next time. And I will see if I can get the last one right. See you soon! Happy New Year, boys and girls. Around the New Year, people often talk about what they want to accomplish in the upcoming year, what they want to change. You may notice that I've changed a little bit too, and that's okay. 
God gives us a lot of freedom to make changes in what we eat or how we look. So go ahead, make a New Year's resolution to try and do something great in the upcoming year. But just because we say we're going to do something doesn't mean we are. Because sometimes we change our minds. Sometimes things come up and we can't do what we wanted. And sometimes we just lose the motivation. Because we are wishy-washy people. Our feelings come and go, and we forget, just like Jesus' parents did in our story today. But we learned something great today, that God isn't like us. He's not wishy-washy, He is not forgetful, and He is always faithful all the time. God always keeps His promises, which is important because He's promised you and me some great things. He's promised that because Jesus died on the cross in our place, our sins are forgiven. He isn't mad at us. He promised that because Jesus rose from the dead for you, you will too. He promised us eternal life. And He promised to be with us here all the time. Those are a lot of promises. And they are big promises. Promises that we wouldn't be able to keep. But God can. And He will. He is the smartest and the strongest and the most loving. And He promised He would die and rise again, and He did. So we know He will keep the rest of His promises too. So have a good day, knowing that God forgives you when you do bad things or mess up or forget, and knowing that He will never forget you. He is with you and gives you eternal life. Bye now. Our Bible verse for today says that the Word of God is living and active. It can do amazing things in your life. Nurse Stacy is always telling us, in order to be healthy, we need to be active. Let's see what she has planned for us to do today. Happy New Year! Can you believe it's 2015? The beginning of the year is a great time to reflect or think about the past year. But it is also very important to look forward to all the fun you're going to have this new year. Have you heard of a New Year's resolution? People sometimes try to make a promise or a resolution to do something different in 2015. It is important to always keep our focus on what God would want us to do and be the person that God created us to be. I know God created our bodies to get up and moving, so let's stand up and walk in place. Hebrews 4.12 tells us that the Word of God is living and active. And right now, you are living and active too. We are walking, feeling our strong legs move up and down. Our minds are full of wonderful thoughts. We can think about what yummy veggie we could eat with our lunch today. I like carrots, carrots that haven't been cooked. They are so delicious and I love to hear them crunch. And they happen to be one of my favorite colors. Do you know what that color is? Orange. Boy, you're pretty smart. Now let's step side to side. Jesus is living and active too. God thinks children are so important that he wants us. He tells us about an event that happened in Jesus' life when he was a child. Jesus took a trip with his earthly parents, Mary and Joseph. How many of you have taken a trip or a vacation with your family? When Jesus was a small boy who walked on earth, there weren't any cars, airplanes, or trains. So they had to do a lot of walking. Stand in place. This trip was a special time of the year when they would travel to Jerusalem for the Feast of the Passover. Jerusalem was kind of on a hill, so Jesus had to walk up to Jerusalem. Let's pretend we are going up a big hill by walking with high knees. Ready for 10 big steps? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This was a fun trip because they probably traveled with lots of families and Jesus got to play and hang out with his friends. 
they may have played catch while they were walking. Can you pretend to throw a ball 10 times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Jesus enjoyed being active and playing with his friends just like you. Once they got to Jerusalem, they went to the temple. Jesus loved to be in his father's heavenly house, father's house, which was the temple. His thoughts probably made him want to jump for joy. Let's do five big jumps. One, two, three, four, and five. Jesus loved being there so much, he didn't want to leave when Mary, with Mary and Joseph. And his parents had to go back to Jerusalem to look for him. Mary and Joseph looked all over. Can you help me look? They looked this direction. They looked that direction. They looked down low. They looked up high. Let's do that again. Look this way. Now turn and look the other way. Look down and go up way high and stand on your tiptoes. And they found their 12-year-old Jesus in the temple talking about God. Those lucky people got to hear a very wise Jesus teach them how God loves them. You could be a teacher too and share the good news to Jesus, to, of Jesus to everyone. Hope you enjoyed our little walking journey to Jerusalem. Have a great week and make healthy choices. Hebrews 4 verse 12 tells us the Word of God is living and active. Even at an early age, Jesus knew what that meant. He knew that God's Word is very powerful. It has the power to forgive, to create, and to sustain people. When Jesus was in the temple, He wasn't disobeying His parents. He was doing what was most important, what His Heavenly Father wanted Him to do. Now, if you make New Year's resolutions, you can make a goal to read your Bible every day. You can read about Jesus in the temple in Luke chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible and would like one, please contact us here at Kids Crossing. We would love to give you a Bible so that you can, too, read the Bible, God's Word. And thank you for joining us today at Kids Crossing, and please join us again next week at this same channel. And remember that Jesus loves you, and He's always with you. Yeah.